Self-talk, what is it? It is merely the inner dialogue that you have with yourself. All of the things that you are constantly saying in your head. We all do it. It's absolutely normal. It can even be helpful. But when it's judgmental, condescending, and in attack mode, well then it's not only not helpful, but it's downright harmful. Today I'm going to give you five things that you can do now to start to change that dialogue for the better. If you're new to my channel, I'm Michelle Harris, and you've found Get Poised, where we talk about all things posing and competition. Today we're talking about how we talk to ourselves. You are starting to realize just how complex and challenging prep really is, from body sculpting and obsessing over the scale and body fat measurements, to counting every single thing that goes into your mouth, to the multiple hours and repetition of posing practice. And that is all very valid and real. But let's talk about your mindset. It plays a huge part of how you process and experience this thing we call competition prep. Most of us pay little attention to that constant conversation that's going on in our heads. So the first step is awareness. And because it's likely become white noise to you, it may start with a feeling. Start to pay attention to that. Well, I'm really annoyed right now because this is the third time I've tried to get this PR and my body is just not cooperating. Okay, what is your mind telling you? Is your inner critic going off saying things like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you still can't do this right. Your dad was right when he said you're weak. Or when you're learning those poses that you've never done before and your eyes well up with tears because you can't Figure it out immediately. This is me. What is your mind saying? I must be stupid not to be able to get this faster. Might as well give up now. I'm obviously a failure. Not helpful, right? Maybe you've seen this meme. Your body hears everything your mind says. It's so true. What you repeatedly say is what you believe. So the good news is that this means that you can start to change the narrative. It doesn't happen overnight, and like learning anything new, it takes practice, time, and more practice. But it's absolutely doable. Now, we do both negative and positive self-talk, but since we are wanting to improve our life experience, we're going to focus first on how to decrease the negative. Negative self-talk for women generally comes down to our body image, comparing ourselves to others, low self-esteem, doubt, fear, and habits. Whether you're someone who needs to drop 50 pounds for a competition or you're an Instagram model, we all fight against all of those things. And then we decide it's a great idea to compete. Well, competing does wonders for your self-esteem and self-empowerment. It also challenges those things to a high degree. So I want you to know this going in and know that you gotta be solid with yourself. The mindset part of competing often gets ignored, but girl, it is so, so important. If you wanna have a fun, enjoyable, productive prep, you need to spend time on your mindset. Because if you ignore it and you go into this with a pretty low view of yourself, it's very possible that it will get worse. I mean, you're putting yourself out there intentionally being judged and you're wide open to feelings of hurt, embarrassment, ashamed, ridiculed, but you're gonna also experience joy and exhilaration and empowerment. Now we can handle and we love those positive emotions, but we also need to have some coping skills in place for the negative, because they will happen. So we have styles of how we talk to people, right? The way that you talk to friends at a party is different from how you would talk to your boss which is different from how you talk to your grandmother. Spend a little quiet time with your journal and think about how you talk to your best friend. Are you tough but gentle with the truth? Are you supportive when they're down and a cheerleader for their success? Now, how do you talk to yourself? When you're faced with those same ups and downs, do you treat yourself the same as you do your bestie? Would you say those nasty things that you tell yourself to your friend, to your grandma? No way! 
If we treated others like we treat ourselves sometimes, no one would want to be around us. Your prep journal or your personal journal is a great place to start identifying some of the ways that you talk to yourself. Now the trick is to not beat yourself up for doing it, but becoming the impartial observer. So there's a middle ground from, I'm a terrible person to, oh, it's awful that I think that way about myself. Instead, get curious. Oh, that's interesting that that's my first response. Hmm. When you do this, some of the emotion comes off of it and you can start to be more aware, which will lead to change. Now, when you get curious from an observer standpoint, you can create space from that strong negative emotion and taking this space can give you the opportunity to create a new story for yourself. Self-worth is about believing in yourself. And as good as it sounds to say, well, I'm just going to fully love myself and believe in me. It's not that easy. It's a process. You can't just make one huge leap to belief. It requires small, intentional, doable changes. So let's talk about a few things that you can do to start. Number one, change your language. Start to notice if you say, I'm sorry, a lot. When you need to interrupt a meeting to talk to someone, or when you run into someone going through a door at the same time, try changing, I'm sorry, to, excuse me, you're not at fault, so there's no reason to be sorry. Likely, it's just a habit that you have, but using the non-emotional, excuse me, changes how you perceive yourself. It's a statement that says that you are just as important as the other person. Number two, don't take things personally. Most conversations are not meant to be a personal affront by the other person, but we may have a habit of taking it that way. Well, she must have said that because I really disappointed her and now she thinks I'm a weak, stupid, bad, insert your favorite insult here, person. It's very likely that you are making up this story to fit your current belief pattern about yourself. Number three, be aware of assumptions, also known as mind reading. What other people think about you is none of your business. And we often don't know what they think, but we sure like to think we do, and then we proceed to tear ourselves down for it. Work on becoming most interested in what you think about you. You can only control your thoughts, not theirs. And believe me, everyone is so worried about what others think of them, they're not as focused on you as you think. Number four, identify your triggers. Start to notice what situations and people trigger you. As you go into prep, you will have additional stressors. So if you can identify certain things that really get you going, you may be able to modify or avoid them. For example, you've been invited to dinner with a friend, but you know that you have to eat very specifically and would probably be bringing your own food in a Ziploc bag. It may sound okay, but how will you feel when people in the restaurant start to look at you, maybe stare at you? And maybe your friend is also uncomfortable so they make comments about, why do you have to eat that? Or, you're getting too skinny anyway. You could avoid the whole thing by suggesting a coffee date or going shopping or to the park. Now, if it's certain people that you can't avoid, like family, then you can gently let them know that this is a challenging time for you. And even though they may not understand what you're doing, you would appreciate their support. And number five, don't believe everything you think. You don't have to go with your first thought. Ask some questions. Is it true? Is this serving me? Is it helpful to believe it? That's a good one. And what is a different way that I can tell this story? You are not alone. Everyone experiences negative self-talk. When you notice that you are in the middle of an emotional spiral, take six deep breaths in through your nose, and out through your mouth like you're breathing out of a straw. This helps to deactivate the stress response center in your brain. Then take a moment to be aware. What am I thinking right now? What am I feeling right now? What is my behavior right now? Awareness is what gives you choice and choice gives you freedom. 
When you become aware of the toxic crap that you say to yourself, you can choose to replace it with something better. Next step is to say, what is my intention? Well, I want to be completely ready for my show. Okay, great. What is one very small step that I can take toward that goal and be successful? Maybe it's just completing the workout for that day. But if you can focus on one small step at a time, the threat response goes away and your brain can work on building a string of successes. Practice self-compassion. Our inner narrative is often harsh, judgmental, and intense. We are often our own worst critic, but in the same breath can be uber compassionate and supportive of our friend who is struggling with the exact same thing, right? We can be the model of empathy and support for this other person, and then we're trashing ourselves. And isn't that ironic? So give yourself grace while you're working on this. For everything we learn that's new, there is a sludge phase. It's slow, it's awkward, and it takes time. But it's worth it. You are worth it. Positive affirmations for the competitor will be coming out very soon, so keep an eye out for it. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I see you, I appreciate you, and I always hold love and support for you on your journey.